Hello and welcome to another session in this subject, physics. Well, in this session, we'll be looking at the topic resistors and cells connected in series and in parallel. But before that, let us review the previous lesson. Welcome back. As you can see from this slide here, you can see instruments or devices that have been connected in some sort of connection. Well, these components you're seeing here on the slide are called resistors. And of course, you know resistors have two kinds of connection. They have the series connection and they have the parallel connection. This is not the only symbol we use to show resistors. We also have the type that looks like this. All of them are resistors as well. And then in place of this, you could have resistors looking this way. Yes, resistors looking like this. And this is the parallel connection. So any of these two symbols can go whenever you want to denote or show resistors. In the previous lessons, we've been talking about resistors as electronic devices that are used to regulate the flow of current due to the characteristics they possess, which is the ability to oppose the flow of electric current. So in today's lesson, we're going to see all what resistors are about and how these connections are made. But first of all, we're going to start with the connection of resistors in series. We'll start with resistors in series. When we talk about resistors being connected in series, we mean end-to-end -end connections. And already you've seen that from the previous slide. These are end-to-end -end connections of resistors connected in series. When resistors are connected in series, they have certain characteristics. One of the first characteristics is that it is the same current that flows through each resistor. For three resistors that have been connected in series, it is the same current that flows through all of them from the first to the last. So let's say for instance a current of 2 amperes flows through this one. It is the same current of 2 amperes that will flow through this and the same current of 2 amperes will also flow through the third one. The same current passes through each of them and this current which is the total current is equal to the <coughs> current flowing through the first resistor which is I1 and it's equivalent to the current flowing through the second one which is I2 and equivalent to the current flowing through the third one which is I3. The second characteristic of resistors connected in series is that the potential difference across each resistor is different. So therefore, the voltage flowing through the first resistor is not equal to the voltage in the second resistor. The voltage in the second resistor is not equal to the voltage in the third resistor. So for you to find their total potential difference, you just have to add three of them. V1 plus V2 plus V3. So let's say V1 is 2 volts and V2 is 3 volts and V3 is 4 volts. All you just have to do is add the three potential differences together and you're going to have 2 plus 3 plus 4 which gives you 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 4, 9 volts. That is the effective or total potential difference that these resistors possess. Another thing is that the powers are additive. In other words, you add the power together. Also, the voltage that has been applied is equal to the sum of the different potential differences like we already mentioned two points ago that you just have to add the voltage flowing across the first to that of the second and that of the third and then you find the total effective voltage flowing through the system additionally to the combined effective and total resistance is added by finding the sum of the three resistors together so let's say for instance the first resistor is equivalent to 2 ohms the second resistor is 3 ohms and the third resistor is 4 ohms and you're asked to find the total or effective resistance of this circuit all you just have to do is add 2 ohms plus 3 ohms plus 4 ohms 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 plus 4 is 9 so the total effective combined resistivity is 9 ohms now, when we have three resistors that are connected in series, all we just have to do, like we've already said, is to add their individual resistances to each other. And if they are more than three, 
you can just add them up so as many as possible. On the next slide, we're going to talk about resistors that are connected in parallel. Remember that while we said resistors in series are end-to-end -end connections, resistors in parallel are side-by-side -side connections. They are side-by-side -side connections. Side-by-side -side connections in the sense that they look somewhat like this. This is what they look like. Yes, side-by-side -side connections. These are the positive and the negative terminals. So, alternatively, you can also redraw them in this method. Now, if you look at this diagram very well, you would notice that the different resistors have their individual currents. When the resistors were connected in series, their individual current was the same. That is, the same current flowed through this, and the same current flowed through this, and the same flowed through I3. But for the fact that they are connected in parallel, it is not the same current that flows through each of them. Each resistor has its individual current. Also, when it comes to the potential difference, this time around, for resistors connected in parallel, the PD across each resistor is the same. So the total potential difference is equal to the potential difference flowing in resistor 1, which is equal to that in, resist in resistor 2, and also equivalent to the same potential difference in the third resistor. Remember too that the current is additive as well. Since they are different, you just have to take the sum of the individual currents of each resistor. Their conductance too is additive and their power is additive as well. Now here is a more realistic diagrammatical representation of cells connected in series cells connected in series now when cells are connected in series all you just have to do is to find the sum of each of the cells together when we talk about finding the sum of each of the cells together what we're trying to say is that all you have to do is let's say this is the total number of cells so all you just have to do is find the emf of one plus the emf of two plus the emf of three and that gives you the total um, emf of the system and if there are n number of cells for n number of cells it's going to become like a um, total number of cells et is going to become a um, number of the cells n e together so et equal to n e number of the emf together but what if the cells are in parallel in other words they are in side by side connection just as you can see here the total number of cells now becomes E1, let's say this is E1, and this is E2, and this is E3. So E1 plus E2 plus E3, and both of them, um, all of them together, you divide it by the total number of EMF. If it's 3, it becomes over 3. If it's 4, E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. Just divide all of them by 4 and you find their total equivalent electromotive force or um, the voltage across them. At this point, let's take a calculation. Now, in this calculation, we're told that some cells, 2 ohms, 3 ohms and 5 ohms are connected in series. And we're asked to find the effective or equivalent resistance of these cells first when they are connected in series and second when they are connected in parallel so I'm just going to draw the diagram and we'll see exactly what it looks like now this is the solution to this so this is the series connection of the the resistors the first one is 2 ohms the second one is 3 ohms the third one is 5 ohms so the total resistance, let's say RT, becomes resistor 1 plus resistor 2 plus resistor 3. So total resistance RT is going to become, we're going to add 2 plus 3 plus 5, which gives us 10 ohms. That is the total resistance of the cells when they are connected in series. What of when they are connected in parallel? In parallel, we're going to draw the diagram first of all and it's going to look like this 
this is for parallel connection now when it comes to problems in electricity always make sure to draw your circuit when you draw your circuit it adds some marks to you and also helps the um, examiner to understand that you know exactly what it is you're doing so the first one here is 2 ohms second one here is 3 ohms and the third one here is 5 ohms you can draw better than this now their total or effective resistivity is found by saying 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 so we continue on the next part of the slide so we're going to have the total resistance equal to 1 over the first which is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 now we have to add these fractions together 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 and you know that when it comes to addition and subtraction of fractions the denominators must be the same for us to be able to add these fractions together and as you can see here their denominators are not the same 2 3 and 5 are not the same so we need to find the LCM of 2 3 and 5 the LCM of 2 3 and 5 so we just have to find it there so let's start with the smallest number which is 2 2 divided 2 is 1 and bring 3 down bring 5 down and 3 1 1 5 and then 5 1 1 1 so the LCM will become 2 times 3 times 5 2 times 3 is 6 6 times 5 is 30 so this 30 becomes not our LCM but our LCD our lowest common denominator so for us to add now we're going to have 30 as our new denominator and we're going to go over to step 2 we'll rewrite these fractions as equivalent fractions so we're going to divide the old denominator by the new denominator which is 30 and we'll divide we'll multiply rather with the old numerator so 2 divide 30 is 15 15 times 1 is 15 here plus 3 divide 30 is 10 10 times 1 is 10 5 divide 30 is 6 6 times 1 is 6 so this now becomes 15 over 30 plus 10 over 30 plus 6 over 30 you can see now that the denominator is the same they have a common denominator which is 30 and that makes our job of trying to add these fractions much more easier so let's try to add now 15 plus 10 is 25 25 plus 6 is 31 over 30 now remember that this is 1 over RT RT being the total resistance but we're not looking for 1 over RT what we are looking for actually is RT over 1 in other words we're looking for RT over 1 so we're looking for the total resistance which is going to become 30 over 31 so when you use your calculator and try to punch 30 over 31 you're going to have uh, an answer of 1.03 ohm so it's entirely up to you to um, change it to decimal or you can leave your answer as 30 over 31 ohms and that is the answer to this question thank you for joining us in this lesson and to refresh your memory on what we've just discussed please take the test that will appear on your screen and do make sure to take more examples in the notes attached at the end of this video